For more than 40 years, Richard Williams, MBE, has been making music here in Thomastown, Tonareva. However, Richard doesn't travel to work as a choir master. People travel to him to sing in one of the three Richard Williams choirs. Richard Williams is, indeed, a man for all choirs. After many years of rehearsing in Richard's front room, the choristers moved, where else but next door, where they built the Tonarevile Music Center. It's an ongoing development open to anyone with an interest in choral music. It's here that Richard Williams practices his unique musical training, a blend of patience, discipline, and a very special musical ear. in South Wales, he brought his young family down and uh, settled in Kilvanet. Um, and there he established, uh, recruited to establish three choirs there, two in the mountain ash in Kilvanet area, uh, having been a self-taught musician himself composing tonic so far. And then at the turn of the century, somewhere about 1904 to 1905, uh, he came to Tonareva again with his family because the pits were open in, in Tonareva then and um, he was given a job because he'd had an accident in the Albion Colliery and had his leg off. They gave him a job looking after the empty houses for the miners until they were occupied, you know. So he used to use these empty houses in Thomastown on Mailer Street here yeah, to hold his uh, penny reading <laughs> command and band of hopes and meetings and things like that. My grand both my grandfathers lived in Kilburn, my father's father and uh, my mother's father. Uh, on, my, on my father's side, uh, all the family uh, stayed, uh, lived in Kilburn, and uh, there were a host of them, hundreds of them, a great uh, name uh, in Kilburn, I think, because they had a, a family name, not a, like all, most Welsh families had nicknames in those days. Uh, some do today. In fact, it still sticks with our family. Uh, Pen uh, where the name actually originated from, I'm not quite sure. Some assume that it, uh, that my old duck here uh, lived somewhere up in Dowlais in, in an area of Penawain, or Penawain. And that, that's where the name came from. But other people have other ideas too. Coal is now the history rather than the future of the valleys, but it's a history that's not forgotten. The musical tradition of these mining valleys was exemplified by the rich seam of musical talent to emerge from Kilvanith, as Sir Gerard Evans remembers. Of course, he comes from a, from a, a musical family, really, I think. Anyway, uh, I'm thinking of Kilvanith, where the Penwerns, they were known, known throughout the village as the Penwerns, and he's a Penwern. And I remember a blood Penwern, with a marvellous voice, always joined all the choirs in Kilvanet, you know, sitting on the front row with a great voice. And then, how often in the summer, when his cousins or his uncles or brothers or whatever, uh, working in the mine, right, all miners, and uh, after coming out to the pub, shall we say, uh, especially in the summer evening, they'd stand on the co corner of William Street and Jones Street, under the lamp, just come on uh, and sing. And their singing was most beautiful. In fact, many of the people around would open their windows having gone to bed and listen. And Brenda, my wife, always says she used to love, love to hear them sing on the corner after the pub was closed. And they used to sing so beautifully that as Ben was saying, 
tears would come to her eyes. So, you know, the, that man, Richard, has m music from his feet to his head. The war uh, broke out in 1939, so I was still only just 16. So I went back to school uh, for a year. In 1939, left school in 1940 to take a job with the British Airways. And I stayed there. And as I say, I was only 16, 17. The voice was then starting to change. Uh, but by the time I was 18, it had developed into quite a bass register voice from a boy soprano, and that actually broke it all. And I started having uh, lessons privately with uh, Franklin Kelsey, who was quite a, an authority on the mechanics of the voice at that time, who moved into Cardiff. And having coaching and, and repertoire with um, Eloy Owen, that led to my being a member of the Lyrian Singers, and then in 1948, uh, I joined the Welsh National Opera Company as a principal bass. And stayed with them for about three years until 51. My first choir was uh, within weeks of my finishing with the um, Welsh National Opera Company. Uh, I, I left, I had to leave for um, personal and domestic reasons uh, that my son, uh, firstborn son, was profoundly deaf, and uh, I had to give as much of my leisure time as I could, or spare time. So I took a new job, about 20 hours a week, and packed in everything else that took me away from home, and spent it with him to, uh, to develop his oralism over the ensuing four or five years. But with all that had been going on in music in my life up to that date, uh, I decided to start a small group in Tanare Valkia. From 1952, uh, we, for 20-odd years, 25 years after that, our accompanist was Trevor Jones from Tanapandi, Paraguay. And he was a cousin of George Thomas, now past speaker of the Lord Tanapandi, of course, speaker of the House of Commons. I'm so pleased that you were going to pay tribute to Richard Williams because he has had a quiet influence for good that cannot be measured. The young people who for the last quarter of a century or more who have grown up in Ton River have fallen under his spell. He's the gentle teacher, the good citizen, a carer. I've watched him just his finger and a smile at the children and the young people. As they grow up, they still want to be with Richard. Two people who Wales has learned to love came from Ton Revel. Cliff Morgan and Richard uh, William. You see, they came as near from Tonopandi as they could. It's just three miles over the mountain. But Richard has contributed in the musical field 
in a way that will be remembered in a hundred years, I believe. With practiced order, Richard prepares for yet another concert, this time of the ladies' choir. He's conducted the choirs all over the world and given more performances than he cares to remember. But every concert is different and presents its own challenge. As is the hallmark of the Richard Williams choirs, the whole family is involved, whether as choristers, committee members, or just there to support the choir at their performances. Tonight, the ladies travel to a concert at the Bethany Baptist Church in Rubina, Cardiff. Here, they'll sing Joseph Parry's Mavanui, a song rarely heard from a ladies' choir, but now in a special arrangement by Richard Williams.
amongst the children's choir, the members of the children's choir, and my nieces and nephews as well. There's a lot of boys in there. And my own three daughters. Helen was one, of the, the middle one of the three. And they all started at the age of about five, six, and seven years of age. And uh, as they grew up together in this choir, after about 10, 11 years or something like that, Helen's voice. Well, all three girls developed nice quality voices. I think Helen had the most aspirations to do a little bit uh, of solo work. In, in the middle of a selection, she would sing a couple of numbers. And then by the time she was 17 or 18, she was doing smaller right and then We felt then that her voice showed some potential. Um, she felt so too. But she decided to uh, go and, and be trained to become a, a nanny. Maybe I'm a, I might have had an influence there, because uh, realizing the precarious careers of, of, of professional artists today, um, it was safer to go into a safe job, you know. Perhaps that's what my parents used to tell me. Um, however, she, she did two years of nursery nursing, and. Uh, felt that she had to give herself a, an opportunity to prove to herself that she could do better than uh, just sing the choir in local concerts. So she packed in the uh, teaching job at Gilbach Roch and went to the Welsh College of Music and from there to the Royal College of Music Opera School where she was accepted. And then fortunate enough to move into the National Opera Studio with uh, in, in London, and uh, we've seen her voice develop all over the years, and uh, she's had quite a few successes so far. is still a great help to me. Uh, <laughs> I think he's a big fan, but he's a big critic as well, uh, constructive-wise. I, mean, I, I rehearse with him every day, actually. Um, 
we spend a few hours in, in the front room and uh, he listens and pulls things apart if you know he feels that they need to be improved and um, so he's pushing me all the time you know in the right in the right way so he still helps a lot really when Helen got married she married a, an English uh, boy with a double barrel name I know he couldn't help it but um, <laughs> he's always <laughs> We're always riveting about this. And when he first met us uh, and decided that they were going to get married, he had, which was a bit of a culture shock to him, really, but he never sang himself. <laughs> Although his father was a, a very famous professional actor. Uh, and um, Peter Dagny, one of you first. Uh, so he, didn't, he did have a theater background. His mother was a ballet dancer as well. Uh, but as far as singing was concerned, he didn't have a clue. But the first thing we did was put him in the men's choir, <laughs> gentlemen songsters. And uh, he, he's, uh, he's stuck it ever since. He's put up with me and the choir. One of the problems of marrying into the family, of course, is getting involved with the, uh, the choirs. Um, not forced by any manner to go into the choirs. It just sort of happens, if you know what I mean. There is this sort of um, family thing, um, and you get involved with the family, you tend to get involved with family activities, and for some reason that seems to be singing. Um, and really, uh, although Helen says to some extent, marry me, you marry the choir, it isn't quite like that. I actually did volunteer to get a job. <laughs> well, I thought I'd give it a go anyway, being a, um, from the other side of Offa's Dyke not having a natural gifted talent for singing, which is the uh, requirement of all Welsh people. So uh, they accepted me with um, a moderate sort of um, disbelief that an Englishman would dare join the choir. <laughs> no, that's not true. They accepted me, encouraged me to join all the men, actually. And it's been great fun ever since. <laughs> In Eistedd Vodai and in music competitions all over the world, the Richard Williams choirs have won an international reputation for the finest choral singing. This success has been won through hard work, through dedication, but also through a sheer enjoyment of the music. tremendous admiration for him because he comes from a, a, a sort of long um, uh, background of, uh, of um, the sort of Welsh valleys um, where he himself has struggled through um, having one child as you know deaf totally deaf and the problems that meant in um, bringing up a child to um, putting himself through university when he was so in middle age and becoming a music teacher. Uh, and, and doing all of that and keeping a family of four going uh, and at the same time having this um, tremendous compassion uh, for people and, and, and humanity in general. And all that translates into this um, talent for music and this sort of um, um, ability to want to get out of really very ordinary people such wonderful sounds and that he, he's got this amazing ear and it's tremendous I'm, I'm 
you just can't say how much I think that this man has got so much talent. In trying to find the roots of Richard Williams' musical talent, we're inevitably drawn to Kilvanil, the home of his grandfather, Edward Jones, whose musical interests became those of Richard, and home also to two of Wales' most celebrated voices, those of Stuart Burroughs and Sir Geraint Evans. Both these great men have sung many times with the Richard Williams choirs, as young men and since they've achieved international success. Famous sons, then, of Kilvanith and William Street. singing long before other people had ever heard of him, probably. Uh, he was teaching at the time. Um, and I always said, as a personal aside, that his voice was as good in those younger days as it is today. That Maybe I shouldn't say that, but he, to me, his, his voice had always thrilled with its natural um, musicianship and, and uh, appreciation of, of, of music obviously with the experience that he's had all over the years but we sang in the very early days from chancery studios and, and the corey hall and places like that the men's choir especially it did a lot of broadcasting in the in the 50s and 60s more in the 60s uh in ballad concerts and uh, uh well we, we've, we knew him then. Uh, a lot of our choristers were members of the Kilburn Rugby Club, and so was Stuart Burroughs. So there was a close social uh, connection there, not a family connection, but uh, I don't know, most people in Kilburn, I think they're all members of the same family anyway. Um, and we've appeared on so many programs with Stuart Burroughs that. Um, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have to count without going through the programs and things to say how many we have done. And he sang on many platforms with us, raising an awful lot of money for our uh, proposed music centre in Tunnel River, which we hope soon will come to fruition. If not, it won't be for the lack of his assistance. To it. So we got a close association with, with Stuart. A uh, friendly one too, I hope. Well, my association with Richard Williams stretches way back uh, 20, 25 years uh, from time when programs were transmitted from Charles Street Studio. There's not many people, I suppose, would remember the Charles Street Studios now. And uh, one could not but be impressed by the enthusiasm and natural talent that these people had. It was a real credit not only to Tonareva but, but to the whole of Wales. It uh, didn't take a genius to see that this choir were going to go from strength to strength and indeed um, they justified that idea by going abroad and international artists they became in a, a very short space of time. They, they competed in local Eisteddfoda with tremendous success but they also <coughs> competed uh, in international competition and it's there that one finds out really what the metal of a choir is all about you know whether they have reached the standard and uh, Richard Williams has this knack of getting the best out of his singers it's incredible to think that Tonareva has produced an abundance almost a conveyor belt of choristers for this man and um, it, it continues to do to this day. 25 years is a long time to span with natural talent. There has to be something in the air or the water of Tonarevel, I, I would think.
boys are always hungry to learn something that will give them a challenge. It's unfortunate, I would say, that at the end of the day, we, we rely on audiences for to keep us going. <laughs> and uh, audiences will accept the serious music if they can hear that it's well done. If it isn't well done, of course, they, they don't understand it anyway. In always seeking to challenge and extend the choir's repertoire, Richard has triumphed in the interpretation of modern work. Here they sing Vendigaid Nos, composed by one of Wales's greatest modern composers, Alan Hodinot. feel that um, the question of pitch, for example, does determine the kind of, of vocal writing that I use. And I've had uh, a number of experiences where uh, the music has suffered because of this lack of pitching in the voices. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing, of course, that this choir is so good at. They, they do sing dead in tune. The Richard's first choir began with eight members of his family gathered around the piano in the front room. And what began with a family has remained with a family. It's their support which has played such a vital role in sustaining Richard's musical career. A career which has benefited so many. My wife, of course, is, is probably the motivator behind all this uh, activity that goes on because um, I can honestly say without her, I mean, this organization wouldn't exist. It's got to have the full cooperation of your partner. And she's the one that keeps us all in order and uh, sorts out the problems and uh, gets a big stick out when it's required. <laughs> and that's often the case. But uh, no, she's, she's, um, she, we, she's been 100% behind. Uh, in fact, not behind me. She's been involved with us children and, and the choristers. In fact, she was a member of the ladies' choir until it disbanded, and she's still on the committees of the, of the children's choir, or the girls' choir even now. So 
she she hundred percent committed as my as as, as, a, as I am and all the rest of the family. But, we were very lucky as there were three daughters uh, interested in the choirs, loved singing. And of course, Helen has gone further with her singing. She's completed her training and she's working at the moment. And we've been uh, very lucky too with our son, who, as you know, uh, been deaf since he's a year old. Although he's been totally deaf, and I mean totally deaf, um, he's never resented the choirs. He's always enjoyed the social side of it. So I think it's been a big help that he's, uh, he's been that kind of uh, boy as well. Of course, his interest is politics, but <laughs> uh, so we help him with what he enjoys. And uh, he's really um, happy about the choirs. Richard was our firstborn. He was our firstborn child. And um, it was very ironic that Richard has never heard the choirs at all. Um, but he's had, I think, a very successful life. Yes. And an and interest in life, in as much as he's uh, found his own interest in um, lots of things, in his career, and uh, at leisure time as a, in local politics. Local politics, which he has uh, been a, a local uh, community councillor for town level for for three years, three years, oh. four years until he moved to Blackpool, and then up to the north of England. Now this week he's coming back to live in Wales, so he'll get involved in local politics yeah. again. Yeah. I think town level ought to be very proud of this man. In fact, Wales ought to be very proud of this man to have continued all these years carrying on, building up a foundation, a foundation for these youngsters, really, that they will always be interested in music. During the interim period that I've been home, between inter international engagements, I have been able to help the, the choir from time to time with concerts to raise funds for this venture, the venture of, of the Music Centre in Tonarevo. And, um, I think one of the most touching uh, things that happens to this day even um, is that when the choir go away to Germany, Russia, Switzerland, you name it, they never forget to send me a card with every choir member's name on. And I'm very touched by this because it has a prominent place in my house. I still love to go either to our St. David's Hall or the Albert Hall in London to watch Richard Williams completely in control and bringing the sweetest music that was ever heard from those young people. Thank God he found his gift and has used it. People are foolish when they underestimate themselves. He is a giant in the music world and I salute him. I'd like to think in the future that uh, how much of a future is left to someone who's 65 years of age, I don't know. But in the future, I'd like to feel that uh, we've left something here in, in, in bricks and mortar and in an ideal that somebody will continue to work with these young people uh, for many, many, many years to come. Personally, I'd like to see established in Tanareva some base uh, that these people will have an opportunity to, to better their appreciation and, and uh, understanding of the arts or music in particular. Uh, it's, it's a high idea in, in the situation as we are today because there's so many diversions for young people that, that it's... Um, but we are lucky. You know, there's a lot of good people turn up here week in, week out, and, and uh, as long as I can keep going, that's the main thing.